Okay, so Consta Kang has released Android TV for the Raspberry Pi 5, and uh, I've got it up and running, and I've also installed the Google Play Store, and uh, it's working fine, but I figured I'd better do a tutorial, because I think some people are gonna get stuck on this. I haven't really played around with it yet. Uh, it does feel snappy, and the Google Play Store is registered, so uh, if you wanted to install an app on there, you would just click on it, and uh, you can see open with Google Play Store, and we'll say just once, and it gives us an install button as you'd expect. Right, so let's quit out of this. I'm gonna press the home button on my keyboard, which is F2, and go to settings, system, and shut this down. Okay, so I booted up Raspberry Pi OS. This is my remote VNC one. Uh, from an SD card in my Pi, I'm gonna plug in a 120 gig SSD drive, and I'm gonna write the operating system to that. So now I'm going to open up a browser and go to Consta Kang's website and just click on constakang.com. Click on Devices and Raspberry Pi 5. And you'll see there's three OSs there. I've already done a video on AOSP, uh, but we now have the better operating system, which is Lineage OS. I just prefer using it. Uh, I haven't tried this one, uh, but I thought I'd do the Android TV as we haven't had an Android TV option on the Pi 5 up until now. So let's click on that. And you can see it will give you two download options. You don't want the OTA one for this tutorial, you want this one, the RPI ATV.zip. So click on that and that will download. I've already downloaded it, so if I now go to my downloads folder just to show you it's in there, along with all sorts of other operating systems. So it must be this one. Yeah, Lineage, uh, unofficial, Constant Kang, ATV.zip, 626 megabytes. So once that's downloaded, Call up Raspberry Pi Imager and go to Choose OS, scroll all the way to the bottom, use custom, and then we need to find that, uh, which is here, Lineage 20. Hit open, choose storage. Well, this is my 120 gig drive, and hit next. I'm not gonna add any customization, and I'm gonna say yes to arrays. And pop your password in and come back when that's all done. Okay, that's all done now, so I'm gonna unplug my USB drive and then plug it back in again. And you'll see that it shows up. We can get rid of these and close this down. Now if we go to boot, you can see we've got config.txt. Need to go into that and we're looking for the boot device. So it's great to see we've got NVMe on this list as well. Now at the moment, this is set to boot from SD card. So if you're using an SD card, you don't need to do anything. But if you're using a USB device like me, remove the hash and put a hash in front of this one, the SD card. So that means that it's thinking it's gonna boot up from the USB device. Now if you want to overclock at this point, I overclocked to 2.8. Uh, you can do if you want, but you don't need to, uh, and obviously overclock at your own risk. Some Pis aren't as good at overclocking. My Pi can be overclocked to 3 gig, uh, and it seems to work fine. But for a first boot, if you're unsure, I would leave it at 2.4, which is the stock clock speed. Right, so let's hit save. And shut this down. We will need Raspberry Pi OS a little bit later on. So I need to pull this out now because I want mine to boot from my SSD drive. So if I start that up, so you can see it's starting to boot up Android. When I did it on this USB stick, it actually restarted three or four times. Uh, I just left it and it ended up with this sort of screen, but this SSD definitely booted much more smoothly. So I'm gonna press escape on this because I've not got any accessories and let's hit start and accept. I'm gonna pick English UK and next, and next, and start. Okay, so this is the operating system, but as you can see, there appears to be nothing here apart from files and settings. So we need to make some changes in settings. So we're gonna to go to system and about and scroll down, Android TV OS build, and just click on that until it says you're a developer. 
There you go, you now have enabled development settings. So we go back, we've got a buttons option now, and we want to turn on advanced restart. I'm going to go back to Raspberry Pi OS now. Uh, so to close this down, I usually press F2 for home. F1 is the back button, by the way. Uh, so let's press the settings button on here and system, scroll down and shut down. So I'm going to leave the SSD drive still connected, but I want to boot from the SD card and Raspberry Pi's default to SD card boot as standard. So the fact that I've got two operating systems, it'll ignore this one and just boot from the SD card. So let's start that up. Okay, so now we need to launch Gparted. If you haven't got Gparted already, open a terminal, type sudo apt install Gparted and hit enter and it'll install for you. But I already have it, so I don't need that. So let's press the Windows key, start typing Gparted and I can launch that. Now this is the drive that my operating system is running on, but this drive is the Android one, and that's why we've got all these partitions here. Now if I click on this last partition here, which is the one that says user data, I can then right click it and resize, and then drag it so that it uses all the available space, all 120 gigs. So hit resize and tick and apply. And that's all done. So let's hit close and then close that down. Now we need to go to the web browser and go back to Consta Kang's site. So if I go into history, so you need to be on the page for the build that you're on. And if you scroll down all the way to the bit where it talks about Google Play Store, how to install Google Apps. So download Mind the G Apps. So click on this and click on, I did the full one, this one here, and that will download. And if we go back to that page and scroll down, and we've got the change log here, by the way, these are the, the things that have been changed in this. So we've got Mesa, so the graphics drivers 23.3.3, .3, FFmpeg, this is to do with sound, camera, Linux kernel, Android security patch from the 5th of January. So keep scrolling down because Consta Kang has a comment on his own blog. So if we click on this one, this is a download to be able to register your device with Google. So click here to start downloading and primary download. And you can see I've got two files downloading now. If I go to my downloads folder, I'm going to put them on a USB stick. Now I've already got a USB stick plugged in and I'm going to put them on that. So if I go to Downloads first of all, find the two that I've downloaded. So mine, the G Apps is one. I don't know what the other one's called, and I don't know what the other one's called. I guess it's probably this one, but let's have a look in my downloads just to see. Lineage 20 GFAID. Lineage 20, ah, so it's this one here. So let's copy those, and I'm going to put them on my USB stick, which is not showing up for some reason. So I'm going to unplug it and plug it in again. There you go. So that's my USB stick. Let's say open. I've got loads of folders on here. I'm actually going to put it in this folder, uh, 001 Android Essentials, just because it's easier to find. So you can see I've got a few things in here already. Let's paste that in. So these are the two files. So now what we need to do is shut this down and remove the SD card again and boot up from the Android storage device. And you can see it started up. So now we can just check in settings uh, to see what storage is showing. Yeah, storage here. And we've got 114 gig spare. So press F2 to go back to the home. Then we can shut this down. So click on settings system, go to restart and recovery. If it doesn't boot into this screen and get stuck on the Raspberry screen, just turn it off and turn it on again. Mine did, and then the second time it did this. Uh, so install, and we're gonna pick the storage device. Select storage, and this is my USB drive that I've got plugged in that I wrote those two files to earlier on. So let's hit OK. You can see I've got Android Essential here. Let's click on that and mind the G apps 
and swipe to flash and just let it do its thing and it will go through and copy all the necessary files uh, wipe Dalvik and swipe to wipe and I'm going to go back and back again using this bottom button and then I'm going to install this RPI GSFAID and swipe to wipe and then reboot system so now if we click on apps we've got the Google Play Store here but if we click on it it won't let us sign in so we'll try it anyway so pop your email in and hit next you can see that something went wrong that's fine that's what's meant to happen so let's quit out of that by pressing home and let's shut it down by going to settings system and shut down and shut down so now I'm going to go back into Raspberry Pi OS by putting my SD card in and booting up and we need to go to the boot partition and we're looking for something that's not there so I'm going to go back and try that again so I'm going to try that process again so try and sign into the Google Play Store and something's gone wrong again which is what's meant to happen so I'm going to try it one more time okay now I'm going to shut down and boot up in Raspberry Pi OS again okay so now if we try again in Raspberry Pi OS and opening up the boot partition you can see this is the bit that I was looking for so this is the registration number or Google ID so I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to go to I think it's on here yeah where I've got the website so let's go to this website to register this Pi so copy that pop that in the browser and then it's looking for a framework ID which is the one that we've just had so let's copy that and pop it in here click I'm not a robot and click register and it says registering device registered so now we can shut this down take the SD card out and boot Android again and hopefully it will be registered if it's not first of all it will be after a while okay so let's click add app and Play Store and let's open the Play Store and sign in again and if it doesn't sign us in first of all this time then we'll just wait a bit and try it again I really don't know how long this process takes please wait okay so it, it was done straight away so I didn't have to do anything extra and then we're just clicking on an app and installing it so if I click on Spotify and install so now you can see if I click open then I've installed Spotify as simple as that and we've got the cool Google TV interface let's try Firefox no Firefox isn't there we'll go with this TV browser let's go with Consta Kang and let's put in Raspberry Pi 5 Android TV back to where we were and if we scroll down and you'll see there's a section here about Widevine L3 now some TV apps or streaming apps may need this functionality uh, and you can install that the way that we installed the other zip files uh, so basically going back into TWRP and installing them uh, I'll probably do that separately but for now I'll say thanks very much to Consta Kang for all his great work and everybody else who's involved I hope all this helps thanks very much for watching please like and subscribe